Okay, books. We're gonna talk about all of the books. All of the books. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the past year and I'm gonna be ranking them from worst all the way to best. Because I like doing that once in a while. I usually do this halfway throughout the year, but I thought, you know what? At the end of the year, it makes a lot more sense. We'll go over them quickly, don't worry. So the past year I read, I think, 35 books. Uh, two of them were rereads, so I won't be including them in my ranking because I think it doesn't really count and also I find it a little less interesting to talk about. Um, but I will be talking about all the other ones and I will be ranking them in categories or tiers and we'll end with the five very best books. The ones that I love the absolute utmost, new favorites of the year 2021. We're gonna start all the way at the bottom the worst of the worst or the most disappointing books. I didn't completely dislike any of these books. I still gave most of them around two stars. And there are actually quite a lot of very popular books on this list. So um, I do expect hate comments. I, uh, I do expect long essays explaining to me why I'm wrong. I actually advise you already start taking notes as I'm speaking about these. So you can really make sure you have like very unique well thought out mean comment okay um you will be graded so the book that i enjoyed the absolute least the worst one that i read this year is actually neverwhere by neil gaiman quite unfortunate neverwhere more like never again i actually wrote i actually wrote that down as a joke that i should say <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> You know, it sounded really good in my head until I said that out loud. <laughs> this is a very good example of a wonderful fantasy concept that gets completely ruined by insufferable characters that the author completely failed to make me root for in any way. I did really enjoy the writing style though, so I might check out more of other Neil Gaiman books. Then a book that I was severely disappointed by was Neuromancer by William Gibson. I was expecting a Blade Runner style cyberpunk book Instead, I got a super action-packed, fast-paced cyberpunk that is so full of unexplained techno jargon that you almost don't notice that the characters are barely developed at all. I do appreciate this classic sci-fi book for inventing the idea of cyberspace though, but it just wasn't for me. Then I was very disappointed in Zomerburen. This is a, a Dutch book, an LGBT book about a girl finding out that she's bi. It really wasn't as in-depth as I hoped that it would be and I really felt like the side characters and the love interest just existed to further the main character's plot and it just kind of left me feeling nothing. The next one of the most disappointing books of the year is Tender is the Flesh. This is a horror book about an apocalyptic future where people have to resort to cannibalism because they can no longer eat animal meat. Properly disturbing? Yes. Kind of interesting to make you think about animal rights and pets etc. Yes. I do kind of feel like this was mostly disturbing. I would have liked it if this book dug a little deeper. I was kind of hoping to walk away from this with new ideas uh, on animal rights and why the way we treat animals is bad but instead I just went away from it knowing what I what I think we all already know, except more properly discussed it. <laughs> and the last of the disappointing books that I read in 2021 is Fahrenheit 451. Yes. This is an interesting attempt at highlighting the importance of critical thinking and knowledge, but overall the story felt like thinly veiled in a layer of condescension. And I also think it really showed a lack of understanding of why people in real life might be put off by certain controversial media and why people in real life might be losing touch with more in-depth media. Okay, we are moving up one tier now I'm going to the books that weren't quite like worst or disappointing but they were definitely uneventful like books that are just kind of like you know i think i think that was clear that makes sense right <laughs> so just right above fahrenheit 451 i have leah on the offbeat by becky albertalli i think i would have enjoyed this YA contemporary a lot more if i read it um, multiple years ago when I was still a lot younger. When I was reading this book I just found myself not being able to relate anymore to teenagers worrying about prom and crushes. This book also completely lacked any direction 
because there was just no plot and no sense of where the story was going at all. I did really appreciate the more assertive main character. Then we have the first of the romance books on this list because this year I really discovered the romance genre and I've come to the conclusion that I either absolutely love them or they end up in this uneventful so-so category. The first one is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is your run-of-the-mill hate-to-love romance. There was some good chemistry, but just like its sex scenes, my memory of this book has just completely faded to black. Then we have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When I was reading this, I was like, am I reading a romance book? Or am I watching like a nature documentary? The author just kept mentioning like his male scent and female sounds and how male he looked and how female she felt in his hands. And I was just like, are we talking about birds? Talking about people? I don't know. Are we talking about birds in like spring, you know? Probably should have been called It Happened One Spring because all of these characters were Twitter patted. It's a fun word. I just wanted to say that word. Oh, the sun is shining through. What is this? <laughs> this looks like someone's about to snipe me. Next in the uneventful tier, we have the love hypothesis, aka another reason why I'm never going to trust TikTok recommendations again. As a bio student, I fully expect to like absolutely adore this like bio sciencey nerdy love romance i would advise the two main characters to take some classes in chemistry though because they had none there's a fine line between creepy and cringy and to me this book just constantly toppled over into cringe territory especially because all of the romantic moments were forced upon them by side characters and i did very often feel a little bit uncomfortable with the age gap between them and like the maturity difference between them i do want to give this book credit for wonderfully having some pretty important topics like sexual assault in the workplace and also the problem of kind of tyrannical supervisors in academia. Then we have a book that may seem a little bit out of place among the other books on this list, but that is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is a story about a butler that looks back on his life. It's very nostalgic, very emotionally nuanced. I totally understand why so many people love this book. It's just one of those cases where I just know that this probably just isn't my genre and I really do prefer Ishiguro's speculative work. Then we have Written in the Stars. You would think that a romance between like a crystal astrology indie girly and like a cool powerful suit wearing power woman would be the perfect hate to love romance. There's nothing really wrong with this book. I did have a fun time reading it. It just really didn't stick to the old brain folds at all. And then the last one in the uneventful slash kind of disappointing category, we have The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. If you're gonna write a super cool dark academia about the Library of Alexandria, maybe show the Library of Alexandria at some point. I don't know, maybe, maybe give some descriptions about what everything looks like. Very dope characters, really, really loved them. But what happened in this book? Nothing. <laughs> The villains get introduced and then you never hear about them again. Extremely important events happen off screen. The entire story felt like it took place in a gray box because nothing was properly described. I did have a good time because the characters were so cool, um, but it definitely felt like a, like a waste of such a cool concept. Okay, those were all of my more disappointing books. We are now heading into good territory so you can all let out the breath you didn't know you've been holding um, because all the books I'm gonna be talking about now, I enjoyed. So if you see any of the books that you liked, I enjoyed them too. Cool, okay. The first book in the just good category was A Hope in the Dark by Rebecca Solnit. This is a pretty nice nonfiction book about the importance of hope in politically desperate times. The main message for me, I think, is how hope is always necessary to be able to make steps forward. And even if you know that like perfection is unattainable, that shouldn't stop you, but that's actually a force to propel you forward. Then we have The Girl and the Ghost, which is a wonderful middle grade fantasy that incorporates aspects of Malaysian folklore. The girl from the title being like this perfectly virtuous, nice little girl. And the ghost from the title being kind of like a 
toxic inflammatory BFF um, that is jealous of everyone. <laughs> they had a super interesting dynamic. It was kind of all vibes, no plot for a while, but I think where this book went wrong was when it started introducing a plot. That was kind of unnecessary. Up next is Men Explain Things to Me, also by Rebecca Solnit, another essay collection of like a range of topics around feminism, about the importance of language in feminism, our need to always categorize and review everything we see, and the unfortunate reality of how women always need to seem credible in order to be even slightly being taken seriously. Then we have another Ishiguro book and that is Clara and the Sun. Ishiguro is just really good at creating very nuanced and emotionally honest scenes and he did it again in this story uh, that is basically from the perspective of an artificial intelligence robot girl made me this book actually made me want to just like throw down my book multiple times just because of like how shocked i was for things that were happening my main problem with this book is that for a story that is trying to explore concepts like artificial intelligence and morality um, it really could have explored concepts like artificial intelligence and morality a bit more then we have the all-time favorite of many people and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. Schwab. For a book that is about a main character that is cursed to have everyone forget about her immediately after they meet her this book had a had a pretty forgettable main character. I mostly loved all the chapters from the second main character, Henry, and honestly, his character saved the book for me. V. Schwab really shows her storytelling prowess with this one, just not her characterization prowess, but that's okay. And the last in the good tier, we have Wondersmith. I wanna say, I wanna say that this book this series, this middle grade series, should be the next Harry Potter. Like it's fun, it has a magical school, trials, villains that are like inevitably tied to the main character. And on top of that, it deals with like really interesting themes for a middle grade book. For example, a big theme in Wondersmith, the second book in the series, uh, is like the falsification of history. I commend the author for writing these- oh, shoulder again. Ooh. Scandalous. Okay, and now we are going to move on to the wonderful, great, cool books tier, which I think in the end, most of the books that I read this year fall into this tier, which it's really good because it means I enjoyed a lot of the books that I read. These are all books I would recommend to everybody. They are great, wonderful, gave all of them four stars, and I just want to gush about them, but quickly. Let's begin. First we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. The book has the same Ghibli nature cottage gore vibe, even though the plot is very different. Funny character banter, magical thunder battles, spells, potions. If you feel like you need a warm hug, you need to read this book. Then we have She Drives Me Crazy. Do you ever go into a young adult contemporary book just for like the funsy sapphic romance and then you are hit with like such an emotionally honest story about breakups and teenage problems and people actually having good communication with each other? Because that that's what this book was. Then we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Talia Hubert has become I think my favorite romance author this year. She is so good at writing interesting characters with their own problems and their own B-plots that also have perfect chemistry with each other that can retain that chemistry throughout the entire book even after they've already come together. The third act miscommunication is always resolved very quickly. It's never annoying. If you think that you're not really a fan of romance books, I highly recommend checking out Talia Hubert. Coming up next, we have My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Moshbag. This is a good example of one of those sad, unhinged woman books. Do not read this if you want your main characters to be likable. I loved it. There's just something addicting about reading a book about a woman that just has completely stopped caring about everything, but at the same time, is like a wonderful exploration of depression and really makes you as a reader also have this hazy, cramped feeling. I think the author did a very good job at creating that atmosphere. Next up we have Dune. I read this book, of course, because the movie came out. It's one of those books that just kind of gets better and better 
the longer it's been since you read it and the more you thought about it. I will be honest, it took me a very long time to get through it and I know the Die Hard fans don't want to admit this, but honestly, <laughs> if it takes half of your 600 page book to get to the point that is also blurbed on the back of the book, there are some pacing problems there, but all the rumors are true. Wonderful world building, interesting characterization, interesting exploration of themes like colonialism and religion and prophecy. Also really great character design. And I think more books should have cool character design like this book has. Then we have a classic. I didn't really read a lot of classics this year, um, but I did read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. When I started reading this, I fully expected just like a green monster horror story. But instead, I got a wonderful story about an ambitious scientist driven by this sickly thirst for innovation and a monster that is mostly just like angry with his creation, with his existence, with his creator. He's lonely. And I am gonna do the annoying thing and say that I think this book is kind of dark academia. <laughs> then another book that I really loved is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I always thought that general fiction was not my thing. Um, and this book proved me wrong. This book is written like an epos of a multi-generational character profile centering around what it's like being a black woman in the UK from you know 60s Marxists to homophobic mothers very well done highly recommend okay now we are entering the top 10 we're still in the generally just good wonderful tier but we are entering the top 10. If you want to know more detail on like my top 10 books I have a separate video in which I really talk about what the plot is about, why I exactly love them and also to whom I would recommend these books. So if you want more in detail you can click here to go to that video but we'll just go over them quickly. So the next book number 10 still in the great books tier we have a Trick Mirror. I think this is the non-fiction version of the unhinged woman book. It's a collection of essays about being a woman in the age of the internet and also self-delusion. This book made me think, wow, I really never had an original thought in my mind ever in the best way possible. Then we have the first of the romance books that I did like. You can see the distance between the romance books on this list. We have Well Met by Jen De Luca. I both hate and love this book. I love this book because it has renaissance fairs, hate to love romance, incredibly good chemistry and banter, a love interest who's an English teacher that tells the main character to watch her language. You may think, Leonie, mm, if you love that, if you love all that, how, how could you also hate it? Well, <laughs> well, I hate this book because it absolutely ruined itself in the last 50 pages with the most unnecessary stupid miscommunication third act plotline that I've ever encountered and I'm just gonna pretend that those last 50 pages don't exist. Next up we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. Yes I am a basic 20 something year old that has fallen in love with a Sally Rooney book. Yes I have also fallen for Sally Rooney's no quotation mark character study of two sad people that just are in love and don't know how to communicate with each other. <laughs> this is one of those books that constantly makes you almost cry and I think that those types of books are better than books that make you full-on cry. Coming in at number seven we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Taylor Jenkins reads put something in her book that makes them so addicting. This book lures you in with its promise of famous people, celebrity gossip, and then you stay because you just love these characters so much and you want to keep reading because you know you want to know what's going to happen to them and you just want to know if they're happy, you want to know what the plot's going to do and you just want to keep reading. And then the last in the wow so wonderful category we have, I know I'm almost embarrassed to admit it but yes I'm one of those people now as well. We have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. There's just, there's no escaping this book. A book that is a romance between the Prince of England and the first son of the United States of America. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And it is. It, this whole book is ridiculous, but like in the best way possible. And then last but not least, we have come to the top of my ranking. The last tier, just the absolute best of the best 
wonderful fantastic books my new favorites let's just go through them quickly number five we have the bronze beast by Roshni chokshi the perfect book series for anyone who loved all kinds of mythology as a child but then didn't really do anything with it when they got older because life kind of got too busy this book could never be made into a movie because no amount of movie magic could do the beautiful descriptions and settings in this book justice. Is the third book in the series kind of full of small plot holes and conveniences? Yes. Do I care? No. I just, I just, I just want to read about my angsty found family. <laughs> Number four, we have Pina Nessi and by Susanna Clarke. Whatever you expect from the story when you first start reading it, it's probably wrong. This book throws you in the deep and then once you think you're kind of happily floating around, kind of understanding what's going on, it hits you with a wave and then another wave and then a tsunami and then you're stranded on an island and then you're like, holy shit, where am I? What do I do? And then in the end, it all makes sense and you find yourself thinking about it for weeks. Number three, we have my absolute favorite romance read of the year, and that is Actor Age Eve Brown, also by Talia Hibbert. Literal pure happiness encapsulated in book form. Yes, it does all the usual things right, you know, great characters, great chemistry, blah, blah, blah. But it also just genuinely makes you so happy for these characters. This is what hate to love should be. They start out not liking each other, but then they overcome their prejudices and they found out that actually they're like perfectly just compatible. They're the only people who really understand who the other is. It's sappy, I know, but I do fall for it. Number two on the list of my favorite books of the year is actually The Yellow Wallpaper. I never thought that a short story could pack such a punch, but this one did. I guess this technically also counts as a sad, unhinged woman book. It combines two things that I love, feminism and horror. How could I not like that? <laughs> and then my favorite book of the year, you probably have already seen this coming, you know what's coming. It is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Have you ever had a vivid dream that kind of makes no sense when you think about it because it's a dream, but it's so real and it feels so palpable, all of the settings and so magical? That's exactly what this book is. The Night Circus is the epitome of no plot, just vibes. And the vibes? they were good. Those were all the books that I read in the past year ranked. If you want to see more videos about books, you can subscribe if you want to. And you can also follow me on social media, especially on Twitter, if you want to see me rant about random things. I've already decided that 2022 is going to be the year where I just pick up whatever book sounds interesting to me and I'm going to try to kind of let go of reading what's popular and just read whatever I like. I am terminally online. And have a lot of FOMO, so I don't think I, I can't say if I'm gonna succeed at it, but we can at least try. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your 2021 reading year was like, and I think I will just see you soon in another video. Goodbye. <laughs>